We're here at the Ericsson talk show studio high atop the Ericsson booth at Mobile World Congress Los Angeles, uh, just above the bustling trade show floor, and I'm here with Eric Ekaden, CTO of Ericsson. Uh, Eric, thanks for joining me. Appreciate well, it. Well, thanks for having me. Eric, um, I want to talk to you about uh, the technology and the future, uh, since uh, this trade show is all about how the network's developing and going into 5G. Obviously, Ericsson has a lot to say about that, but uh, more specifically, um, you released your uh, six tech trends that you feel like are, are going to uh, be most important. Was there, was there a particular one of those that you feel uh, most passionate about or something that sort of stands out in, in the group for you? Well, in a way, um, but we are also in this uh, fast-moving industry. You could say that our industry is scaling faster, growing faster than any other industry, any other technology, and of course that means a lot of new technology constantly, almost yeah. all the time. But, but keeping up with the trends, I think it helps uh, one when it comes to what are the priorities, how do you make sure that the networks that we're building, the network platform, take care of new demands. Mm -hmm. And two that, that are, I think, important to look at when it comes to the demand on the network platform is the internet of skills, which is really about using low latency to be able to carry senses across distances. So okay. think haptics, things the kind of uh, very strong experiences, augmented reality, all of those things. So the Transmission of presence to a Transmission of presence, yeah, exactly. So the Internet of Skills. And we're starting to see some of the, the early applications of that, but also the technology is now ready. The other one that is also putting requirements on the infrastructure is what we're doing with uh, kind of the evolution of IoT. Uh, call it cyber physical systems. So it's um, all the logic that you have in your robots, your drones, everything that is uh, surrounding you, that when you start to move some of the uh, control logic from the device itself to the network platform, leveraging both the edge compute capability as well as a low latency, that's when you start to see that you can radically simplify, you can create completely new uh, autonomous systems right. interacting with each other. So, so those two, I think, are, are really important when it comes to what the network platform is used for. Right. Then we have four that are more related to how the uh, platform itself Evolves. Well, those two are more about you know dis re really distrib distributed mobile computing and also um, you know uh, also high high degree of bandwidth and low degree of latency. So so back to 5G, I guess. Yeah, of course 5G will enable this in a, in a massive way. But I, I think that the important thing is really to think of it as. Uh, the consumer side is evolving. We see that with the early 5G devices, it's more than the smartphones. You have AR, VR that comes with a bundle when you're buying your first uh, 5G subscription. But you can see that also in the advanced cloud gaming space. So a lot of things there are really leveraging the low latency, the high bandwidth. Putting that all together, of course there will be an evolution on the consumer side. That's where the, the senses come in. But equally much, there will be an evolution on the, the kind of IoT side or uh, cyber physical system side. So, so I, I think you're right. They, yeah. they will truly leverage what 5G as this innovation platform, network platform can offer. What about on the uh, uh, on the consumer side? We see a lot of early applications for 5G that are that, that involve like uh, uh, real time gaming, multiplayer games, and that sort of thing. Um, do you see any uh, any consumer applications, non gaming, that that sort of excite you about where 5G is going or what its potential is? Well, I think you, since you mentioned gaming, we have here in our stand, we have this uh, great uh, example with uh, Atomic Mari, which is really exercising uh, in an advanced game uh, 5G to its full extent. Uh -huh. But I think yeah, what we're already seeing is the enhancement of the experience in a stadium with sports, uh, live sports, yeah. uh, typically with AR capabilities. Real time is extremely important. And I think yeah, going beyond that, it is really about moving part of the user interface from the device itself, offloading a device, not having to do all the heavy processing, doing that on the network cloud, using the low latency, of course, but also creating a completely new user experience. Maybe carried on, on glasses, maybe carried on a handheld device, but with completely new form factors. You see some of that is actually already starting to happen in the early markets like Korea, okay. where you have um, network built out, already right. it's more than three 
million, 5G subscriptions, yeah. 5G is a little more mature there, it, took, took off a little more quickly. It did, yeah. and, and, but I think the underlying infrastructure is not only the platform, the network platform, it's really also the fact that you have coverage across all of Korea basically, which allows this uh, experimentation, the innovation for applications to happen, because many of these will enable things that are uh, wide area. It's not only in the stadium, it's not only in the campus, it's not only in your home, it's actually out and about. And I think that's, that's really exciting. In fact, we will see that during 2020 in most early markets for 5G, that they will ramp up in terms of coverage, ramp up in terms of uh, what you can do both in, in local environment as well as in the wide area. What do you think the, the devices that were sort of, that are just central to our lives right, right now, like the smartphone, the, the trend in smartphones is to get faster processors, the, the screens are getting larger and larger and, and, and they're getting more and more cameras on them. I, it, I might be in the minority there, but I thought it was going to go the opposite. I thought we were going to start seeing those, uh, those individual jobs you know, offloaded to other smaller devices, the Internet of Things or, or you know, wearables and that sort of thing. Personal area networks was one thing that we... Yeah, had yeah, that, 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 all that vision made sense. What was the missing, what, what piece was I missing there? Is it because the, fact, the form factor is so compelling? Is it because it's what we're used to? Like when you buy a smartphone, do you, or, or you, you're using a smartphone, are you thinking about how this could be decomposed into parts? Or, or do you feel like that's, that's the, are we still heading off in that direction? Well, I think it, it was um, an early thought that that would be easier to, uh, to manage, that you have specific uh, eyewear for glasses, you have for, for your ears, maybe for the haptics part. I, I don't think it's a bad vision. I don't think it's a bad idea. In fact, you will have this kind of wearable uh, equipment that is it's not only glasses, it is kind of truly wearable. Um, but I also see that the power of the ecosystem coming together in terms of smartphones is really shown again. It has done in the past as well, but now when we go from 4G into 5G, we're really seeing that the industry is pulling in the same direction. We get interoperability, we get the chipsets uh, working with all the new bands, the millimeter bands, the mid bands, the low bands, all of that coming together, and it's possible to build smartphones as the first iteration. That was not the case in the previous generations, and in fact, right. that is just the learning of the industry, that it all comes together in one form factor, the smartphone or a tablet or something like that. But I actually see that because of some of these capabilities, we will have much more of a, uh, yeah, call it immersive yeah. experience by, by also having wearables in multiple form factors. Uh, so the smartphone maybe not going away, but maybe, uh, uh, maybe it augmenting. Be, it will be complemented very much, I think, with these, these things, absolutely. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting how that, how that particular vision's changed, especially as the, as the, the network itself has become more uh, uh, important in our lives. You know, the connectivity and, and, the, and the, the latency as, as it happens there. Um, as you're looking at, uh, as you're evaluating technologies and technology markets, I, you know, one thing that we're, we're sort of looking at is that, you know, cloud computing is happening at one pace, 5G networks are developing at one pace, uh, devices are developing at another pace. How do you keep up with all the trends and making sure that Ericsson is, is representing the trends and, you know, being, uh, uh, you, you know, there for its customers in that space? Because all these things are happening at, at different intervals and at different intensities, you know, uh, uh, it's, it, it, it seems like that would be a, a, a quite a difficult job. Well, in a sense, you, you're absolutely right that there are different cycles in terms of maturity of technology, and, and, and we do keep a close look at that, but we also do very much of our leading, world leading research in, in those areas to be able to piece it together. In fact, the reason we are the leader in 5G when it comes to commercialization here in North America with with all the operators uh, supported by Ericsson Network Gear and so forth. It really started almost 10 years ago when it comes to uh, building the research foundation, going into early standardization, of course commercialization. But that had to be so because of the relatively long cycles on the, on the silicon side when it comes to the air interface, the, the, the core part of the network platform. There is much more uh, agility, if you like, or, or faster cycles when it comes to the orchestration layer, when it comes to the applications, which is no surprise, I think, in terms of how you need to build modular systems. You need to have an architecture, you need to have horizontalization, you need to have components that evolve at different 
different pace, to your point. And I think our job as Ericsson, as a leader in the industry, and with our uh, partners and certainly with our customers operators is to really pace this so that it comes together as a system. It doesn't come together as something where everyone has to make it work with lots of heavy and, and uh, costly system integration. In fact, it is a network platform rolled out nationally, uh, rolled out globally, and then you get all the benefits of a platform, interoperability, global scale and all that, at the same time as you can have different innovation cycles when it comes to the uh, lowest layer of the infrastructure, and then you have uh, sort of faster cycles and more agility the, the higher up you go in the stack. So I think it's actually a great task to, to really uh, manage and, and work with, with the whole ecosystem, as this is, of course, a true collaboration. This is not only on Ericsson, this is a whole ecosystem that you need to, to work with. We find it difficult just to keep up, so I'm, 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 glad, so I'm yeah. glad you're doing such a good job of it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, it's very much uh, an effort across the industry, and I think that's the strength of our industry, that it is a collaborative effort. Yeah. Then, of course, uh, as a leader, we have to, to drive and push and, and, and uh, always challenge what, what we already have, uh, to take the next step. Uh, last question, what's the thing you're looking forward to the most about a uh, massive 5G deployment or, or when 5G is, is sort of everywhere and, a, and, and more of a reality for consumers? Well, I think we have touched upon the consumer space quite a lot now because we know how to do it and I think uh, the evidence is there. The customers really love it. You see data is, 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 uh, is basically exploding because of the new capabilities. Um, but you, you see the same kind of interest on the enterprise and the industry side. And I think that's really exciting because what, what that means is that instead of having local bespoke infrastructures that are serving limited needs or, or needs that are very, very specific to one company, we are getting the same kind of requirements from multiple industries. So bringing that onto the platform and of course uh, with the AI capabilities that we build into the platform, we automate much more with uh, advanced uh, resource management uh, capabilities, with network slicing and inbuilt security and all that, we can serve needs that previously you had to build with components and SI. Now we take all of that out of the equation, we are able to deliver that to global companies, local companies, and of course, for them, that's a, a big step. So I don't think that it will necessarily happen overnight, but that is really the opportunity for the whole industry. And, and that's a fantastic growth opportunity, both for, for Ericsson, I believe, as well as for the industry at large. All right, Eric Ekkenden, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.